Before we get into the video, I need you guys to do me a favour. Number one, like the video. Also comment, let me know your thoughts on the story. Ian Blink McDonald is considered by many an audacious and dangerous gangster, whom made his fortune by robbing banks. His biggest heist being £6 million from a NatWest bank in Torquay. For all these dangerous escapades, he's known to have spent most of his adult life in 18 different jails, and being told by prison officers and the parole board he was not rehabilitation material. Now apart from the numerous jail stints, Ian Blink McDonald was also known to cruise around Glasgow in his distinctive black Mercedes with his private license plate firmly on display, which meant that known gangland rivals were able to spot Ian from a mile away, and it meant that their many attempts on his life were made that much easier. Ian McDonald also had close ties with gangsters Paul Ferris and the godfather Ian Thompson Sr. Now born in 1961, Ian was the oldest of five children, three brothers and a sister. He had a brother but they tragically died when they were 18 months old. Now born in the Springburn area, he spent his childhood in the Black Hill area of Glasgow, known for the drugs, numerous stabbings and the homes being in 1966, Black Hill was often described as one of the most deprived areas in Europe. At the age of 14, Ian had watched his dad lay hands on his mum for numerous years. His mum for years had normalised the strikes to the head and body. However, she finally had enough and police were called and Ian's dad was removed from the family home. Now, Ian's dad was described as a no-nonsense type of man and was the unrivaled disciplinarian. That meant that Ian and his brothers did not hang on the street corners with mates causing trouble. They told the line, but that changed once Ian's dad was out the house. Now with Ian's dad's disappearance, Ian, his younger brother Gary and younger brother Alan were sent to approved schools for doing things like stealing cars and shoplifting. He was also known to target jewellers with a sledgehammer by walking right inside and smashing the jewellery display cabinets and also taking the cash takings. Not deterred, at 16 years old, Ian was sent to Borstal. He did admit that he was terrified of the place and the regiment. Now Ian's younger brother Gary was jailed for 8 years for slashing a man's throat over comments that he deemed were disrespectful. Now while in Barstow, an 18 year old Ian had been called a jock by a Liverpool inmate. Ian told the inmate if you call me a jock again I would do you in. Of course the Liverpool inmate called Ian a jock. Now Ian emptied batteries from a radio and put the batteries in a sock. He then went over to the Liverpool inmate who was laying down on the bed and says do you want to call me a jock again? Before the Liverpool gangster could answer, Ian had swung the sock and connected with the man's face, red splattering on the covers and also the wall. Now at age 22, Ian Blink McDonald was back outside and he formed a very close relationship with his GUN and then began robbing. His bread and butter was post offices and security cash vans in transit. At 30 years old, Ian's friend Michael Healy, who was already at this time a known Glasgow gangster, was on the run from HMP shots after escaping in a butcher's van. Now he had been on the run for three years at this point, and he found Ian at a pub and gave him the opportunity to rob a bank with him. Now Michael Healy told Ian that he would not have to enter the bank and he could just be the getaway driver. Now Michael Healy had given Ian a few months to think about the idea of being a part of the gang for the bank robbery of a possible £6 million heist. Ian did not need to think about it. He had ascribed his dream of being a millionaire by the time he reached 30 years old, so there was no way he was going to refuse the opportunity. Now up until this point, Ian was a well-known gangster, only in the local area, because his biggest heist had been £70,000. Now the gang had broken into the bank and hid in a cubbyhole for two days, that being the NatWest Bank in Torquay. Now NatWest Torquay staff members were ambushed when they began their shift. The gang had promised the staff that they would be if they screamed or tried to run away or did anything silly. To further their resolve, two female staff members were dragged by the hair to the vault and told to open it, but they screamed they could not do it without a key. Now the six-man gang that consisted of Ian Blink McDonald and leader Michael Healy demanded that the 15 to 16 staff members lay down on the ground face first, arms behind their back. The building was three stories high. Their arms were tied also. 
Now, while the robbers demanded the cash and the keys to the safe again, the manager of the branch, Brian Thomas, asked to be untied and let go so he could open the door. He explained he did not want any of his staff members hurt. Now, one of the gangsters had then fired his sawn off, pointing at the ceiling as a warning. Plaster fell from the ceiling and landed on the woman's head. Of course, the head was open. The press says that she had been in the head, and of course they ran with it. Now, despite the fact that there was no alarms, police had rushed to the scene, and the gang fled empty-handed, apart from being given bank cards. A witness had noted down the van registration the gang was using, and a police helicopter was used to track the gang's movement. Now, as for Ian Blink MacDonald, he managed to evade the police by hiding out in the caravan park for five weeks in total. Now, Ian's name was in the press, and he was a wanted man. He knew this. Still, he arranged to meet his then-girlfriend, Sheila, in a Chinese restaurant, and he was ultimately arrested by undercover police. Now, Michael Carroll was jailed for 18 years. Ian MacDonald, Thomas Carrigan, Robert Harper, and James Healy were jailed for 16 years. As for the leader, Michael Healy, he was jailed for 19 years. When the gang went to the Old Bailey to be given their sentence, it was lined with police, as the gang had promised to K barristers and also the judge. Now, Ian B. MacDonald ultimately served 10 years and 5 months, and he was released in 2001. His time spent in prison was hard. He was trying to survive sharing spaces with serious criminals, criminals that consisted of drug dealers, gun runners, traffickers, and also serial murderers. This would be the time that Ian's downfall would begin, because he started to take coke, and this was not for recreational uses. He always dreamed of living, living a fancy lifestyle. He wanted a house, a car, expensive things. So when he left prison, he did something serious to a known gangster who was connected to well-known families, families that were millionaires. The aftermath was that Ian was handed seven Osman notices, which means there was a very real threat to your life, and a warning was issued by the British police. And then, in May 2009, a bomb was found under his car, which had the license plate, the BL1NK. Thankfully, the bomb was discovered before it could be detonated, and it meant that 16 homes had to be evacuated. Only four days later, Ian McDonough was ambushed by a group of men. The gangsters that had targeted Ian, they all had blades, and it was used on the side of Ian's face. One guy was sitting on Ian's legs, holding him down, while the other had Ian's chest. Another gangster was trying to aim for Ian's throat, and that's when his side of his face was caught. Ian gave as good as he got. He was unarmed because he knew that the police were watching him, but he fought back. Ian says that the mark across his face is called a Mars bar in Glasgow. The constant back and forth between Ian Blink MacDonald and the crime family was going to lead to an end. Now before it got to that point, which was really close, Ian and the gangsters had a meeting. They decided to call a truce, and that was that he explained. Now, the only rivalry that Ian has would be with fellow gangster Paul Ferris. Because the two men have decided to leave their gangster lifestyle behind, and now they are both speakers and podcasters, both men are trying to allude to the fact that they were the biggest gangsters in Glasgow. And of course, only one man can be. Stay safe. Safe.